Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to a uh, to a one shot, as it was. <laughs> this here is Bust a Move, also known as Puzzle Bobble. We're gonna play normal. One player. It is. One of the earlier examples of a uh, post-Tetris puzzle game. You can tell they really wanted to get away from the blocks falling down idea. So they kind of replaced it with this, uh, this sort of physics puzzle. So you could just aim the balls and hit them and match three it's one of the earlier examples of a uh, of a match three type of puzzle game ah hell get you um, as you could probably tell speed is given a premium and the faster you can go the more bonus points you get. Also, the more time you take, as you'll notice, the uh, the puzzle space comes down a little further. Boom, got that. Uh, I hate when I do that. Which, of course, Alters the shots. Woo. Well, bah. gotcha. Woo. I'm not the best at puzzle games, as uh, as you can likely tell. No bonus. But. Ugh. Much like with fighting games, I, I enjoy them. So I play them. Come on. Damn. I am not doing well. Hmm. You can also see that this was a, uh, a Neo Geo game. This was... Come on. Yes. Woo. It uses that classic technique of whew, of speeding up the music when things get a little more hectic. You know, a little... Come on, yes! Boom! It speeds up the music as the puzzle gets closer to you. And, as you've likely guessed... What the hell... When it crosses the line into your um, character space, it's over. That's how the game ends. Ah, oh, hell. Gotcha. So the game's got a very simple, I simple formula. It's mad easy to uh, to pick up and play, but. It will take you a while to, uh, as the kids say, get good. But then again, isn't that the recipe for a good puzzle game? Easy to pick up and learn, hard to master. Oh, hell, I'm getting my ass kicked. Come on, that's right. <laughs> but it's fun anyway, you know? And, uh, much like with Puzzle Fighter... Puzzle... Pocket Fighter? I keep, I keep calling it Puzzle Fighter, which is, an, which is another game... You know, of the sort. It's a, uh, game that layers the cute on very thick. 
Whew. That was close. I will take the clear, quite frankly. Of course, this being an arcade game, it is hella difficult. Thankfully, the controls couldn't be any simpler if they tried. You use the joystick to move, and button A to shoot your ball. There are no other controls. Console ports of this of this uh, game and sequels and the like would add a, an option to move your cursor slower, usually by holding another button. However, this is the first of the Puzzle Bobble series, so you get no such thing. Hmm. Woo! That was close. Done and done. It's actually quite the fun little ser fun little game. Alright, uh Come on, let's hit Ah hell. You know I was gonna fuck that one up. Yes! Boom and boom. Oh, that didn't turn out well. Uh, let's see if I can... Uh, close enough. Now, what sets this apart from, say, Tetris... Is that, unlike Tetris, which... Starts with a clear board... The challenges here are very, very much set. You know, you're presented with a with a puzzle. You know, this set of balls, and it's just about solving it. Uh oh, I wasn't supposed to do that. Eh, it wouldn't be the first time I mess up. Wouldn't be the last. Oh boy, that's not good. Ugh. Ah, I hate when that happens, when you think it's going to go through, but then it sticks to one of the other walls. Oh, that's the worst. Come on, yes. You see, it requires a lot of trick shots to, uh, to figure out. Uh, this ain't gonna work. Woo! Hmm. Come on, get in there. Yeah. Yep. When you get this far, one mistake can mean death. Woo. We're done. You know what? I'm gonna give it another try. J. Uh, where's the E? E. Uh, there we go. Entered the. Uh, hey, the best five. How you like that? Press one P. Let's do it. And when you continue, you get the little line. Which you know, I didn't think I was doing that badly. But that's just what they do when you get a, when you put a new credit in, or in this case, use one of the four continues. That was one of the things about the Neo Geo. The Neo Geo had uh, was essentially 
an arcade board that they just made into a home system for, you know, for crafts and giggles, I guess. The system came out in America at a price of $699. That is $699 US dollars. It came with two, uh, two arcade stick controllers and a copy of either... I think it was Magician Lord. I'll have to look. It was either Magician Lord or Nom 1975. And... The games, you know, they, they could be pretty damn expensive. 150 bucks, 200 bucks. I mean, they, they were, it was not nice. <laughs> it was not, not nice. So you can imagine, the system didn't exactly take off. And you would see ports of SNK games like Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting on the more mainstream slash affordable consoles, the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. Japan would also get some pretty good, uh, some pretty good versions of some of these games for, uh, for the PC Engine, the TurboGrafx-16. But as you can imagine, the Neo Geo was always this highly desired, highly sought after system. Because rather than having to make a version of the game that was different. They just they just made they just brought the arcade ROM to uh, to home users. That was it. Uh, there's a problem right here, boy. Oh, th this one's ki this one's ki this one's killing me right now, man. Like I was saying, the uh, the Neo Geo was this highly, highly coveted system that very few people could get their hands on because of how damn expensive it was. And the reason for that is because it was the arcade board. Basically how it worked, right, was the actual ROM that was on the cartridges was the same. Except for the pinout. It was the same ROM, it was just the cartridge had a different pinout, right? And initially, the arcade cartridges, the MVS, were, were more expensive. The understanding, of course, is that since these were being bought by arcade operators, you know, they would, uh, sorry, they would get their money back when people, you know, put their quarters in. So I think like the I think the MVS cartridges were like 500 bucks. You know, not bad considering. And the uh, the cartridges for the home, like I said, were like 150, and they and they went up to 200 bucks, and they just went further and further up from there. But a funny thing happened, as you could probably guess, the uh, the arcade games were a lot more successful than the home counterparts. So, look at that. So, you would have a lot of MVS cartridges hanging around. And those, and many of those would go down in price. But, since the AES cartridges, the home cartridges, didn't do anywhere near as well, because, you know, good luck trying to get a home customer to spend that much money on a friggin' on a friggin' single game. Uh, you know, what happened was is that the, uh, the AES cartridges got much more rare, and as a result, a hell of a lot more expensive. Damn. Hmm. Woo! This is not going well for me. Hmm. This ain't gonna work. I knew it wouldn't work. Now, you would think that with people spending some of the most ridiculous m amounts of money ever on these games, 
that there wouldn't really be any difference between the two um, versions. And for the most part, yeah. I mean, again, they were the exact same uh, ROM. But the ROMs had two different modes. What you're seeing here is the, uh, the AES mode. <clears throat> which is the mode that was used for the home system. And, come on. Oh, that was not supposed to happen. Let me line up the shot. That didn't work. Whew. Whew. Anyways, like I was saying, the AES was mostly the same, but since the cartridges had two different modes, which was determined by the BIOS, you know, if you stuck it into a system with, uh, into a home system, you would have a home system BIOS, and it would put you in home mode, and for arcades and arcade mode. Now, for some games, you would have the uh, the content be censored. For example, in, uh, in Samurai Showdown, the blood was made white for the home version. Which is kind of insulting when you're asking people to pay $150, $200. You know, later it got up to, like, I mean, it was ridiculous, like $250. Like, they were expensive. So I, I, think, I think the idea of neutering the content was kind of stupid but the big change was that rather than oh, hell rather than essentially having unlimited credits the game capped you at three which as I'm sure you can imagine made some of these games a lot harder to complete at home. Now, mind you, there was no scaling for the difficulty. Now, I don't think all games limited, yourself, limited you to four credits, but a lot of them did, especially a lot of the later ones, you know, as the system became an almost exclusively fighting game joint. Shot. Ugh. Those narrow shots, man. Those are always like some of the hardest ones. Gotcha. But again, I think, especially for a game like this, where essentially the puzzle resets when you when you uh, start a new credit. I think it, it, it would have been nice to, ha to have them be unlimited credits. Now the uni now nowadays, of course, um, you can have your system modded with the universe BIOS, which is what I'm using here in Mame. Come on, oh hell! And that lets you uh, and that lets you set the games to infinite credits, among other cheats. I'm not using infinite credits here because this is just a one shot. Oh dear. Whew. Whew, that was close. But yeah, for the most part that's the that's the Neo Geo. A system that was ahead of its time in offering arcade perfect games in a time when that was just a dream but you paid for it <laughs> boy did you pay for it man i remember i wanted one of those things man but after seeing i mean i didn't even really think about the uh the cost of the systems because i was a kid back then but like even as a kid when i realized how much the games cost I was like, yeah, that's not gonna happen. So we ended up get, so I ended up getting a Super Nintendo. You know? 
Mom, mom was a lot more uh, receptive to that, as it were. <laughs> ah, hell. Yes. Come on. Ugh. Whew, another complete by the uh, hair of my chin. But yeah, the Neo Geo, I wanted one, but man, if, if there was ever a system that was out of reach, yeah. Not even the system's price, because, you know, today we spend, you know, 400 bucks at launch for a next-gen system. But the cartridges, man. I, I can't I couldn't imagine paying hundred fifty dollars two hundred dollars for a, for one game better be one hell hell of a good game <laughs> that's all I'm saying like I used to get like most of my Super Nintendo games back in the day I would get second hand from rental stores you know when they were clearing out the old shit well, so you'd get like a like a used soul blazer for 14 bucks or whatever at the West Coast those uh, those, as they say, were the days. Oof. That's a sup. Hmm. Where do I put you? That'll work for now. Yes. But as you see now, I have, uh, I have zero credits. So, once I die here, that's it. Gotcha. Woo! You gotta be willing to do that sometimes. Little bank shots off the side. That was not the best move. That was even worse. Oof. Oh boy, it's a problem. And we are done. Put the name in one more time. And, uh, that was, uh, Puzzle Bobble, aka Bust a Move, for the Neo Geo. Yeah, I can push the two-piece start, but I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna do that because I would need another joystick set up, and I don't have that. Yep, game is over. And as you can see, they reset the four credits. And there we go. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, please tell your friends if you did, and uh, you know, hit like and subscribe and all that other good stuff. Thank you all. And God bless.